the environment, navigation, map reading. I hope you like acronyms. There are two types of aviation charts or maps that are useful for our type of flying. We'll talk about them both and the ways to access the information that they provide. Every inch of Canada is shown on at least one of the VNCs. VNC stands for VFR Navigation Chart. That's right, an acronym within an acronym. VFR means visual flying rules, so the things you'll find on this map are useful when you're navigating by reference to the ground. That includes things like rivers, roads, terrain, obstructions, and other identifiable landmarks. VNCs are on a scale of one to 500,000 and has a line of latitude and longitude drawn every half degree, or 30 minutes. VTAs are VFR terminal area charts. They are zoomed in charts of busier areas of airspace on a scale of one to 250,000. This means a line of longitude or latitude is drawn at every quarter degree or 15 minutes. Winnipeg, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Vancouver, Calgary, and Edmonton have VTAs. You'll notice a huge difference trying to pull information from a cluttered VNC and then switching to a VTA for these areas. While digital versions of the VTA and VNC exist, I recommend picking up a paper copy as it contains the legend for your reference. Many flight schools and aviation stores will give away expired charts and the legends stay pretty much the same year over year. Aeronautical information includes information on aerodromes and airports. To save space, shorthand is used, and this is why having a legend nearby is useful until you're familiar with the format. First, the airport name is listed. Below that are a series of numbers. The first indicates the aerodrome elevation above sea level. In this case, 11 feet. Next, if the aerodrome has lighting, there will be an L. If the L is in a box, that means that there's RCAL lighting, or aircraft radio-controlled aerodrome lighting. You can turn the lights on from the radio. The longest landing distance is in hundreds of feet and is next. So if the airport has two runways, one at 2,500 feet and the other at 7,000 feet, it'll say 7-0 here. Next, there's usually an indication of the frequency and what kind of aerodrome it is. TWR means tower and M implies mandatory frequency. Both of these require for you to have a radio to be within the airspace. You may also see an A for aerodrome traffic frequency, the one to use if you have a radio and want to talk on it. It's not mandatory to do so though. You can also read the class of the airspace by the symbols outlining the border of it. Class C and D look similar and will clarify in writing if you follow the line around. Class E aerodromes have a dashed line and class F airspace is indicated with many lines pointing towards the center. To locate the airspace you're in, you can use these indicators. Find it's easiest to find your location relative to an airport and then move outwards. Airspace touches the ground within the borders defined above. If you're further out than the border, then the controlled airspace starts to funnel upwards and will start at 700 feet or higher. Anything below the funnel would be class G or uncontrolled airspace. As noted earlier, coordinates of longitude and latitude will provide a unique location on the surface of the earth. This is a critical skill to have. You can do this quite easily by dropping a pin on an online program like Google Maps, but can also be roughly found on an old regular map. If you're provided with coordinates such as 51 degrees, 51 minutes north, and 107 degrees and 17 degrees west, you can find this position on a map. You'll see this puts you into Laura, Saskatchewan and in Class F advisory airspace due to flight training. 